I love you. Everybody loves a baby. I love it when she smiles, but I also love it when she frowns and when she cries even. It's like I'm, I'm besotted. Congratulations. Five couples share their journey of a lifetime. What it's really like to have a baby of their own for the first time. I'm just so overwhelmed that she's here and she's safe and she's healthy. To love like they've never loved. Imagine feeling all the love you've ever felt in your life and then just having all of that in one shot. To think the unthinkable. Just stop crying otherwise I'm just going to walk out the door. If I didn't love her as much as I did, I would have walked away. Shut up. I'm no, Charlie, I'm sick. Oh, my God. Newborn babies test strong relationships. I was going mad. A baby in the house means a whole new life. Jesus Christ. Breastfeeding. Um... I enjoyed every moment that you were breastfeeding. Oh. It was just really, really painful. It was awful. As their relationships are put to the ultimate test, these couples find out what they're made of. Five couples are pregnant, dreaming of babies soon to come. Five relationships are set to change forever. It changes the dynamics of the relationship, yeah. doesn't it? Of course it does. <laughs> it's, the third, it's the third person. Yeah, yeah, it goes from two to three. Yeah. Mums face the initiation of labour, and dads will be there to help. <sighs> labour is, you know, absolutely vile and absolutely amazing. Together, it's together in one experience. You lashed out once, which, yeah. which weren't too bad. So, oh. <laughs> yep. For me, I was pretty sure the best thing I could do was, like, just be there and do literally nothing. Mm. Like, literally not say anything unless I was asked to, literally not. Mm. Like, because, of course, She's going through everything to have a baby. Together, they face fear and doubt and experience the wonder of what is to happen, to know what it is to become mum and dad. You just want to grab hold of her, you know, she's my, you know, she's my daughter, I want her. David and Marilia are practising Orthodox Jews. After finding each other and having a marriage made in heaven, there was nothing greater life could offer. No ambition more pressing than having a baby of their own. OK, now David's going to tell me the sex of our baby by looking on a sheet of paper. I think it's a girl. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> I knew I was right. We got pregnant very quickly. Thank God. That's, that's all we could say. Some people don't. Some people don't get pregnant very quickly. Being pregnant for Marilia was big news. In the whirlwind nine months that followed, she nested and told everyone who would listen about her pregnancy. Right when I found out I was pregnant, I was like elated. I was running around. I, I couldn't keep my mouth shut. I told everyone. I mean, I told the cashier. I told everyone. You know, I was just telling everyone. I was so excited. Until her pregnancy became hard work. Pregnancy was violent. I felt like I was hit by a tr I just had, I was not prepared for what pregnancy put me through. It was, oof, it was tough. You hear of like morning sickness, oh, okay, I'm gonna have morning sickness. Nobody tells you it's like the most mislabeled thing in the world. I mean, it's not morning sickness, it's all the time sickness. Oh, the, the hormones. I was, I went crazy, I was crazy. I, I did not recognize my thoughts anymore. This is what it was like. It was like somebody came into my brain and kidnapped it, okay? And then like went crazy. The brain, it was, it was interesting though, cause like the, the hormonal thing was very up and down as well. Like, mm. There was times when you were like feeling just, the, the, in general, the first trimester, you were just feeling yeah. awful. Yeah. And that rebounded on, on me at times, yeah. right? Everything he did annoyed me, everything, everything he did, I was like, why are you standing like that? Why do you stand like that? Why are you walking? Stop walking. Everything he did annoyed me. Then in the second trimester, you've actually felt really good most yeah. of the time. Yeah. And that also rebounded on me. She would like look at me like with these adoring eyes. <laughs> like, it was like, it was like either side of the coin, really. She would like, she'd be like, look at me in a, in a totally, also in yeah. an abnormal way. So, yeah. you know. But pregnancy heralded the start of an existence that Marilia has always longed for to be a housewife dreaming of babies to come. I feel like I should have been born in like the 40s so that I could be a housewife in the 60s, you know, or even the 50s, because 
I do enjoy the traditional gender roles. I feel that um, I, I'm gonna get like crucified for this, but I, I really feel that like, like I feel like that women are really have a special knack for like bringing up kids and stuff. I, I feel that. Nine months have flown by. Marilia is starting to have contractions. Hi, my wife's at labour. Marilia is from Brazil, where natural birth is the exception, not the norm. Despite her reservations, Marilia has opted to give birth naturally. <laughs> Anyone home? <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm from Brazil where everyone has a C-section and it's just, that's just the way babies are born. You know, it's just, every odd woman will say, oh, I want to have my baby natural. And then everyone goes, oh, that's so like green of you. <laughs> you know, that's such a, wow, well, what a hippie, you know, because everyone has a C-section. And I feel that, that um, over here, it's, um, there's a different attitude. It's after hours and Marilia's baby is on the way and it seems like there's no one in. Up to level three now. <sighs> Hello. Once upon a time, there was a couple who thought that having a baby would be one of the easiest things they could ever do. Plain sailing, a walk in the park. For them to have a baby and bring it up, love is all you need like the kind you have in the honeymoon period, the kind that lasts forever. Step one to having a baby means picking someone to have it with. <laughs> the selection process is often fairly straightforward. To be honest, we, we were having a few drinks and uh, yeah. after a few drinks, you just, you get start getting to know each other. <laughs> <laughs> An instinct for what kind of relationship will work long term plays a part. She's got a good sense of humour. She's got a lovely smile. And she puts up with me, which is the main thing. <laughs> which uh, not many women probably would, but uh, I'm quite hard work. And uh, she's willing to work with that. With Charlie, I, I wanted to be with him all the time. Anything he said was hilarious. Anything he said was interesting. Wasn't necessarily right, but, <laughs> you know, I just wanted to have babies with you. And... Let's face it, you know it's going to be a good looking child, <laughs> don't you? Yeah, of course. We just decided very quickly that we were going to start trying for a, for a baby. After eight months of being together, they decided to have a baby. Lynn was pregnant within a month. Oh my God, it happened very quickly. I wasn't expecting it to happen so quick, but it runs in my family. What is? Fertility. This couple went for it. That's when the second thought started. Am I gonna make it as a mum, you know, I've got to go through childbirth. That's, you know, really, really scary. It was really, really scary at the time. And, you know, you just think about everything. And obviously, you know, Charlie's like, was a massive thing that I thought about. And yeah, there was, there was massive doubts there in, in my mind. I had it in my head that when we became pregnant, we became pregnant, we wouldn't drink, we wouldn't smoke. You know, we would, we, you know, would both kind of be pregnant and I know that it's me that's pregnant but I thought that Charlie would stop all this as well um, but he didn't and that that's what worried me that's the, the panic just set in I've got to think of a good name I thought of loads of good Harvey. names Harvey yeah it's a lovely name Harvey Cod Harvey Cod it's got a certain that's je ne sais quoi but Lynn put on a brave face panic or no panic about her relationship baby was growing bigger by the day he was always wanted and it was just each other. That's, that's what we were doubting. Claire had always wanted a baby. She'd tried for years with a previous partner and had given up. Baby showers and becoming a mum was not a future she had predicted for herself. Until Malcolm came along and changed all that. When I first saw you, I really, I, I fancied you. I was like, oh, he's quite, quite dishy for an older man. Um, and yeah, I did. It was, it was really. You were a bit of the, um, 
Because he, Malcolm came across really cheeky. So Claire approached me and said, hey, you know, do you fancy going out for a drink at the weekend? Oh Simply something like that. And I was a bit, <laughs> I stood there and looked at her. And I think I must have just stood and said nothing for maybe a nanosecond too long. And it seemed far too long. So I turned my back and walked away. <laughs> Embarrassment. Got, and I was a bit quite, like, I've never quite, been turned down in my life. <laughs> so soppy. At the time when we met, I thought he was sort of early 40s, maybe 41, 42. Um, and then obviously you told me you were 47 at the time. It's and not the end of the world. I know it's not the end of the world, but I was just. <laughs> I don't know, I was shocked. a bit, I was shocked. I remember her face. And I know, all, the, all that was in the back of my head was like, oh my God, my mother's going to kill me. Claire is 28, a happy 20 years Malcolm's junior. Malcolm introduced Claire to his existing family. He has three sons already. He also became a dad to Claire's beloved dog, Alfie. Having Alfie is probably um, a good start to understanding what a, a three-year-old's like bouncing all over the place. Claire got pregnant after three months, and now Malcolm is having his fourth child. It's Claire's first. I was pleased that I'd made her this happy. It was a case of, yep, I can do this. I'm, I'm quite capable. I've been here before. It's, um, and I want to do this. I like having a gentleman, and Malcolm's a gentleman, and he's kind and loving and really affectionate, and that's what I love the most. I think he's a bit old-fashioned in his ways, Malcolm. And he is caring and loving and, and a lot of respect as well, which is really nice. I think with Mao, it's just, he's older and wiser. And I really enjoy that. Nine months have flown by and Claire is overdue. She's going into hospital to be induced. No, no I'm pretty calm about the whole thing. Uh, my hospital bag. OK. It was like waking up on Christmas morning, ironically, with childlike expectations of a little bundle of joy turning up today. Um, are you sure you want to wear one of your best shirts? Why not? Oh, fair enough. good. Chambers, I've got an appointment at 9.30. Thank you. Oh, you have it. You've done yeah. it now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just too tempting. When I was two weeks overdue, I just wanted it. I just wanted the baby out. I was not sleeping, couldn't eat much, and I was just tired and ratty. And, um, and I was overexcited as well. So you get to that point where you think you're counting the days past your due date and you just want it there and done and dusted. You just feel uncomfortable, tired and impatient. Here you are. You bored? No. That's right. Anything else, you just press the buzzer and I'll be just outside, OK? The baby does not want to come out. Malcolm is confident he can say the magic words. Listen to Harvey. Are you going to come out today? Oi, are you going to come out and play or what? We've got a whole new strip waiting for you to wear. Hey? It's gone down. Relaxing. Ah, oh, it's daddy. See? See that? You can't be impatient. I've got to hold back on all my emotions and feelings to support Claire in this moment of joyous occasions. Our couples are pregnant and waiting for baby's arrival. Mums will shortly face the unknown territory of labour for the first time. Should be taking the tour. <laughs> baby, it's moving. Our dads will support as much as they are able. But for some, bringing a baby to term is not an easy road. Amy is pregnant with a baby girl. Eva, her daughter-to-be, is about to have everything a baby girl could want. Shopping is her mum's favourite pastime. Amy particularly wanted to be prepared for Eva, you know, every eventuality, 
every size up until she's pretty much one. And so any time that she saw any clothes or baby grows or any accessories, she'd just buy them. She's got more clothes than us, I think. <laughs> Before she was born, I think she had about 10 pairs of shoes. Um, well, 16 pairs of footwear. Her wardrobe was jam-packed. Her shelves were all full. Her chest of drawers were all full. And so she just went... I mean, we... Well, we, we got a lot off the baby shower as well. Yeah, yeah, Amy had a baby shower before, obviously, Eva was born, and um, everyone was really generous there and bought loads of clothes and gifts and things, so that was... That really helped. I, had, I was a little bit of a psycho with my lists, and I had a list that mm. I had to tick off. Amy is happily expecting now. But she and her partner Stuart have been through as much as any parents could be expected to endure. They lost their first child while Amy was giving birth two years ago. Who's Henry? Um, Henry's our firstborn. After he passed away, we, we've, we've got a chest of drawers and these pictures on there and a few sort of trinkets as well. And he's um, a big sadness in our lives, you know, that we didn't get to see him grow up and um, see his eyes or hear him cry. I think the reason why we were able to face this pregnancy and we were so strong going into this pregnancy because we left it. We had that time to grieve for Henry in between and we dealt with what happened head on. We just longed to have a family. Um, Henry will always be part of our family, but we we had empty arms and they needed filling. Um, and we were prepared to fight for what we wanted. It was a fight, a risky one. Amy had a 50% chance of losing her second child, too. Problems with her cervix mean that a surgical stitch has been placed to help her carry her baby to term. I dealt with it on a day-to-day -day basis and I couldn't go any further than that. Um, it was just something that I had to do on a daily basis. Amy is now to term. She's booked in for a C-section. Hospitals scare her. I can't even put into words how scary and gut-wrenchingly frightening the whole situation was. Every time I walked through those hospital doors, we thought that we were going to lose her. We thought that we were going to lose another baby. Hiya. Hiya. I need a rent. Reception? Yeah. OK, I'll take you down. The idea of that, I got th through Henry and I got through losing my first baby and I just didn't, I just couldn't even comprehend doing it again. I just couldn't even bear to even think about it. Paul and Caroline have been married for nine years. They live in Blackpool. Paul is in the army and spends Monday to Friday 300 miles away. They've been trying to have a baby, but Kaz has miscarried three times. Like Kaz was saying, look, I, I can't do this, can't do this. I, I mean, will I ever get pregnant, will I ever get pregnant? And it's just hard when you, obviously your wife's going through that and, and we're both having to just, we have to just deal with it as a couple. And it is hard, it pulls on your heartstrings, do you know what I mean? Not once to give up, Paul and Kaz set about trying for the fourth time. Paul being 300 miles away comes with its own set of difficulties. It got to the point where it was like, right, I'm ovulating this weekend, right, I'm not home, like, right, I'm coming to see you then. Yeah. <laughs> and it so just be like... <laughs> so she'd come all the way down to, to camp and You try and make me. it so it's not like, um, what's the word? Forced. Yeah, like forced. <laughs> yeah. Not that it wasn't enjoyable whilst we were trying, but I think we can just... We're, we're, trying so relaxed, we're trying at certain we times now? and getting it right for ovulation yeah. and actually getting pregnant rather than yeah. just doing it for fun. There's a di the massive yeah. difference, massive difference. Oh, yeah. I wanted to become a father, so I think when you want something, you, you, you do your, your best you can be. And um, I, I've just always wanted it, always wanted it. And like I say, I've had experience with my, my godchildren and I love them to bits. 
but like having your own, there's nothing better than having your own. Once Kaz was pregnant again, she was sent for tests, revealing that her blood was clotting along the umbilical cord. Happily, this was easily fixed with medication. As a woman, you think that it should just be a natural to be able to carry a baby and give birth and stuff, and you do, you do feel like a bit of a failure, but I think I felt better having had tests to realise that it was something that I had no idea about. Kaz is determined to stay pregnant this time. She's taking aspirin and injections to keep her blood thin. This time, she's going to have a baby. That just kept working and she stayed pregnant and it was like, even though you're on tender hooks, you're like, oh, don't know how long it's going to last this. Is it just one of them things that just keep us going? Then we got to the first scan. It's those we're, milestones, yeah. isn't it, I think? like Them scans mainly, yeah. but we're getting, we've got extra scans to make sure everything was OK. But we still, in the back of your mind, you've still got that thought of, is it going to be fine all the way through? And then obviously with the blood thin, bit thinning injections and aspirins was the, the risk of pregnancy then, natural birth. Marilia is in labour. When you're in labour, God's like really close to you. He's, um, he's, he's like, he's facing you. He's really close to you. And um, it's a time for you to ask for things like where he's like, he hears the prayers of women in labor. Very soon, Marilia's biggest prayer is for pain relief. She's three centimeters dilated, but it feels like more, a lot more. How many am I? It's, it's, it's three. No, mm. no. It's three, but the head girl comes, you know, when you're contracting, the head, the head is quite, you know, low, which is good. Oh, it's not three, it's like seven. <laughs> 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 you know it is, you're kidding, right? But with no good three. Oh, Your no. waters are just, you know, they can break in any time. Yeah, break water is <laughs> So what should I do? Walk? Yeah. <laughs> Walking, sitting, leaning, nothing is helping. You know, when you're having a contraction, you just want to hit your head against the wall and pass out, you know? It's painful. It's not, it's not menstrual cramps. Whoever said it's like menstrual cramps is lying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I don't know who has cramps like that, but if they do, they need to seek medical advice mm -hmm. because it is far worse than cramps. Far worse. Why are they supposed to be having like gas and air or something? Don't they have some of that? I was like, there is no way I'm doing this without an epidural. There's just, mm. there's no way. Epidural. I don't need epidural. Yeah. I can go talk to him. He's not here. Or her. Where is he? He's in case. Yeah? Mm. I'll go in there. I don't even write out a headache without medicine. You know, like I, you know, like I wouldn't extract a tooth without, I will not like, have a baby without an epidural. Like, there's just no way. That was like, you know, and I went in and I was like, epidural. I'll tell him. Uh, we'll wait for him to come. I'm, I can go in there. I'll just sit next to him. He can just sit next to I'll just, I'll just go in the theater too. Oh my God. It's not fair. I want it to pass. And that if we can get the epidural, hopefully that should be able to sleep a bit, you know? In the moments between contractions, there were incredibly happy moments of my life, like excitement and giddiness and, oh my gosh, we're having a baby. Oh, I'm gonna miss my tummy. I kinda like it. I've had a really positive body image with this tummy. It's good. And then, uh, you know, like, you know, I want to die. You know, it's like horrible contraction. And then it, it finishes and you're like, oh, my baby. You know, you just, you know, you feel really good. Finally, Marilia gets her epidural. Naturally, it didn't work. So I had like no pain relief till I was like eight centimeters, which is my luck. But um, it worked for like half an hour. Yeah, it worked for half an hour. Which is worse. I was like, oh, oh, wow. Oh, cool. Uh, uh. <laughs> it was worse because you were like, oh, you know, and then bang. Uh, 
Ah. Oh, they got stop moving, didn't it? Ah. Yeah. It wasn't what I expected, not that I thought too much about it. I mean, you're just, you feel very powerless, obviously, because it's like, you want to do anything you can. But actually, for me, I was pretty sure the best thing I could do was like, just be there and do literally nothing. Mm. Like literally not say anything unless I was asked to, literally not. Mm. Like, because of course, she's going through everything to have a baby. It's all right, it's okay. Our babies are coming. Mums will be pushed to limits they did not know they had. Dads will be there every step of the way. Together, they face the fear, the pain, and the wonder of what is to happen. I was thrown into a situation where it's like sink or swim. You know, it wasn't that, like, oh, the, I just knew how to breathe. I was like, that's the oh, do I breathe? I'm in so much pain. She was drugged out of eyeballs. Yeah. She had every eyes. drug they, they would offer her. I think Absolutely it's like amazing. a total worry right up until giving birth to thinking, oh, is this going to happen? Is she going to arrive safely? And then it's a whole new ball game. For Claire and Malcolm, labour is imminent. Like all women about to give birth, Claire has no idea how her labour will play out. How fast, how slow, how frightening, joyous or both. It was about three o'clock and... Um, I said to Mel, I said, I need to get out and go for a walk. I'd been, been induced and I just wanted to sort of get out of the, the, the ward, really, and just, I just wanted to see a different four walls. Yeah, I just want it out. You should have said that at the beginning. <laughs> I just turned around and said, um, she was talking to that lady, oh, I've just booked her in for a C-section or something. Wish I had one of them. And we went round once and then we came back and I said, let's go again. I didn't even make it halfway before oh, I... Well, you, you, you did about 25 yards and the first big contraction hit. Yeah. Oh. Happy pain, happy pain, happy pain, happy pain. And then it was another... It wasn't even that small pain. period pain that everyone says to get... that says that you start with. Oh. All right. No, it's hurting. And as I was walking, every time I could feel my body warning me that a contraction was coming along. You're right. No. Every time it was happening, I was literally grabbing the wall. And me. And and you, and just sort of holding myself. And your knees were going. And right. yeah, and I just I didn't have I felt I didn't have the stability like to to hold myself. No, no, no. This is really. It's all right. It's okay. Come on. I knew it was the right ones because her knees went and she had to grab the wall and grab me. And then by the time we'd gone all the way round, she's saying, I want to go to the loo. I thought, here we go. You all right, Treeks? No, I just, it feels like I'm on the poop. I don't. No, don't do that. I'm oh, running in a bath in the hospital. Malcolm, a well-rehearsed dad, is the ultimate helpful must-have male accessory on hand for delivery. Apparently this might help. Because you're going to be a mummy soon. Yeah. All right. I think Claire had a, the perception that because I'd been at the three births of my boys, that I'd have all the answers and the, to what to do's and when to do it when it come to this time. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> what I learned at being at the birth of each of the boys was every birth is different. I just people want to go through this more than once. Yeah, it's all right that side, isn't it? Uh, I just didn't know what to expect. Unless you go through labour, you just do not know what the pain's going to be like, what the situation's going to be like. I wanted to go! I also remember thinking that the poor girls that were either waiting to be induced or they were waiting to go in for their C-section, and I thought, oh my God, if I had a girl doing what I'm doing, it'd scare the life out of me. Use it, use it, uh, and breathe. So I was trying to hold myself from screaming out because I didn't want to scare anyone else. I was in so much pain through my contractions that I, I just didn't know what to do with myself. I was just, I, I didn't know what I wanted. You wanted me to rub your back. You didn't want I, me to rub your back. Yeah. You wanted the gas and air. You didn't want the gas and air. I wanted to stand up. You wanted to stand up. Then I you wanted, wanted to, to sit down, down. yeah. Claire eventually settled into her first labour, a real trial by fire. He wasn't panicky, he was so calm, okay. and I think it just 
it did me wonders actually having you there. Okay, I did. I think punch you in the leg once. No, you shin. You tried to shin me, but you had bare feet, so it didn't hurt. <laughs> I know. I know. Keep breathing. And then you you lashed out once. Which, yeah. Which weren't too bad. So, oh. <laughs> yep. One way to deal with the pain is actually to fight itself within yourself, and I think she was doing that process, which, which yeah. helped. You know, some women want to scream it out, others growl it down. You know, and it's and it's either way, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, just looking forward to her being here and hearing a cry. So, yeah, the nerves are kicking in, starting to feel a bit sick. <laughs> Amy, having lost her first baby son in childbirth, is about to have a caesarean section to deliver her baby daughter. Nine months of holding their nerve has brought this couple to the brink of success. I was scared that potentially we could lose Eva because we knew obviously what had happened previously with Henry. Uh, obviously Eva was older, so if anything was to happen, she was better equipped to survive. But obviously, you know, a plan C section doesn't necessarily go to plan, which it didn't. Um, and because of the start of trying to get a, a cannula in, because that didn't happen for 45 minutes an hour, because they were, they were struggled to get the cannula in. It made us both quite anxious, especially Amy. As the moment of delivery draws near, Amy and Stuart have to control the memories of their loss from the last time around, and to have faith that this time they will have their happy ending. How long have you had the suture in for? Since 16 weeks. Since 16 weeks? 22 weeks, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's five. It's job, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah? It's, it's, it's surpassed its job, really. <laughs> <laughs> I like being in control of a situation, even more so since everything that happened happened. Um, so I had a birth plan, even though the birth had been taken out of my hands and it was in the hands of the surgeon. I still had a birth plan. I made my feelings very clear that as soon as my baby's born, she comes to me. Nobody else comes to me. Um, and it was something that I had to really fight with myself and really come to terms with, that somebody's going to see my baby before I am and somebody's going to hold my baby before I am. The moment of birth is here. Our couples are about to become mum and dad. Babies are born and lives are changed forever. Ready, push, push, push. Push, push, push. And push down, good girl. Look what you've got, one of Little those. Little girl. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I heard a cry and all I can remember is just feeling an overwhelming relief. I just felt like I felt um, ten tons lighter. Well done. I said within two hours, I said it'd be here before five. Yeah. Two minutes to five, two, so 53, baby. An hour and 45 minutes later, she arrived. Yeah. Um, well intense. I'm not doing it again. Not immediately, no. No, I'm not doing it again. OK. I just wanted her. I just wanted her with me. From that moment that I held her in my arms, it was like she'd always been there. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a missing part of the jigsaw puzzle.
a sudden, I just got like a, a wave. So it's like, imagine feeling all the love you've ever felt in your life and then just having all of that in one shot. It's like a very, very heightened sense of emotion. I cried out, out of pride for you. She, she was like amazing. How did we live so long without her? It's so crazy. It's so surreal. It's the first picture of Darcy Elizabeth. I think I'm still in shock. I'm just tired and I'm overwhelmed, actually. It was just a rush of emotions. I mean, she was beautiful. Um, she was small, but she was big. <laughs> that was a bit of a strange one because she, she was bigger than what we expected, albeit she's still this tiny baby, but she looked quite chunky. The love that you feel instantaneously for this this little baby, and you know you just want to grab hold of her. You know she's my, you know she's my daughter. I want her. It was just an overwhelming experience. All of our couples have given birth. In this moment, whatever the future holds, they are in wonder and awe at a miracle of their own. I remember thinking, she looks nothing like me. <laughs> like, I just had, I didn't realize, but I had this image of what she was gonna look like. And she came out and she looked like David's nephew. And I was like, she looks nothing like me. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's just brilliant. I love it. I love the whole thing, being a dad, everything. It's mega. When I first saw him, it was uh, love at first sight. The most amazing moment of my life. It's like, it's like a drug. It's the highest I've ever been. After years of trying, Caroline has given birth. So this is Lola Grace Chaloner. I was convinced she was going to be a boy, so I'm quite shocked, but I'm excited. Um, and she was eight pound three a week early. Jeez, some girl didn't go full term. I don't think you would have got out. <laughs> Paul made it up the M1 at short notice to be present. I will share it with you. But they said that I need as much skin to skin as possible for breastfeeding. Is that your excuse? Yeah, they do, honestly. Yeah. And by the time I got here, it was like she was 10 centimetres dilated. So it was like, right, going for it, weren't you? And and it was, was painful like, for you, wasn't it? Yeah, because I was like, can I have something? And they were like, it's too late. It's too late. So I couldn't have anything. I just have gas now. You might have to breathe in the, the air of the room, to be fair. No, gas and air is boring. Have you tried some? No, is it still I there? Yeah. Go and try it. It doesn't, it doesn't really... It might make you a bit like I did, but it doesn't take pain away. It's making me high, I think. <clears throat> oh! <laughs> Jesus. But it does, does not take pain away, I'm telling you now. No, it's making sure that... No. She's here. Yeah. To then finally get Lola. It was just unbelievable. It was like a miracle, wasn't it? So precious. Yeah. Yeah. We were just dazed and dazed, just staring at her, thinking, we've actually got a baby now. She's there. She's she's ours. And we're looking at her in the features, weren't we? Yeah. And it was just like, oh, it was amazing. And did Daddy kisses? Gorgeous. It is a fairy tale now, after everything we've been through. It is a fairy tale. Lynn and Charlie have had a baby boy and named him Harvey Cod. There's no going back now. I had an episiotomy, um, which is um, where they um, cut you open to, so they can get the uh, utensils, what are they called? The utensils in, I can't remember what they're called, to pull out the baby. Um, Prongs. No. Forceps. That's Forceps. it, Forceps. We're in theatre. And Harvey was placed into my arms, and he was crying, wasn't he? It wasn't so much placed. The doctor threw him threw Harvey. <laughs> into my arms. And he was really slippery as well. It was like was this he? doctor must must. He was like, "Here you go." <laughs> he obviously does this ten times a day, yeah. so he didn't really care much. He was just like, he knew that oh, we wouldn't drop him, so he was just like, Ksh. it was just Ooh. just this baby to him. So he was just like, <laughs> it was really emotional though, wasn't it? I, was, I started crying. She was drugged out of eyeballs. Yeah. She I had every those. drug they they would offer her. Yeah. She was like, give, give me I've got a low pain threshold, so yeah. 
yeah, pain relief was um, quite important to me. Um, and I don't believe in that mind over matter. Well, I do believe in it, but not at the time. <laughs> You've done well, babe. I'm proud of you. Three days in hospital. Yeah. We did try and kind of rinse out the uh, NHS as much as possible. <laughs> We thought, because a lot of people, they're like, oh, we're getting in and out as fast yeah. as possible. Well, we didn't want to do that. We thought no. we're going to we're gonna take as much help as possible. This is our first yeah. child. It's quite daunting. Do you, is it quite daunting for you? Yeah, we, we've got a lot to learn. Yeah. When I first saw him, it was uh, love at first sight. Even though they're covered in blood and slop and whatever. It's just a totally different feeling. You're so perfect. Yeah, that brings tears to your eye, both eyes. And you get all choked up and it's crazy. Really, you can't describe it, it's just like, the, it just mm -hmm. makes your heart melt. It's just this massive rush of love.